Hello again, Interwebs. Welcome back. My name's Tethys, and today we are starting our first playthrough of Clock Tower 2. This is, as I said before, Clock Tower 1 in America. In Japan, this is Clock Tower 2. So let's get right into it. New game. And if I recall, <clears throat> this does take place right after the events of the first one. Or at least a little bit. Professor Barton? Oh, we got voice over. Professor Barton? Professor Barton! What on earth are you doing, Professor? You mustn't hypnotize her like this. She's not ready to remember the murders yet. Helen, the clock tower murders are fascinating research material for me. I must know the truth of what happened. She can't take any more of this today, Professor. I'm taking her home. All right. But remember one thing, Helen. You may be her guardian, but you are also my assistant. Yes, Professor. All right, so it looks like we can just get started right off the bat. Um, I've done some uh, messing around with uh, the graphic settings, so I'm hoping uh, that everything looks nice. Take information out of her future profiling materials. Okay. File cabinet. Patients' records are kept here. What's this? There's a memo stuck between the pages. You found hint number one. Hints. We get hints now, do we? Uh... Whatever. There is a faint smell of ammonia. Are those the scissors? Giant pair of scissors on the desk. A replica of the scissors used by the murderer in the clock tower case. But I like the weapon used to slash up his victims. Why would you have a replica? Interesting. Why would you have a replica of something like that? It's like having a replica of John Wayne Gacy's clown outfit. My laboratory. Lately I've been doing mostly criminal psychology. Research. Oh. The staff is still here. What's that? Statue. It's cold. One of the items found at the scene of the clock tower murders. Seems to be hiding some sort of secret. Be a good idea to get an expert opinion on this. Alright, who are you? Professor, Helen left a few minutes ago. She looked really angry. Hmm. Teddy bear. 
A stuffed animal. Looks like a prize won at a fair. Helen's desk. Scissorman's rubber mask. A kind sold in cheap novelty shops and seems to be fairly popular. People certainly buy stupid things. Professor, a newspaper reporter is here. Did you have an appointment for an interview? I'm sure that my voice acting, acting, will fit right at home with the voice acting in this. Harris's desk. Clipped out articles of the clock tower story are scattered about. It seems Harris has gone somewhere. Where did he go? And what in the hell is that noise? There's still something I need to do in here. Okay, so we looked at Helen's desk. Looked at that. Looked at what's that? Okay, so we looked at that. Looked at the mask. Um, hop over here. What else do we have? Talked to her, looked at the bear, looked at Helen's computer. Jennifer are really beginning to look like sisters, aren't they? I guess that's what happens when you live together. One mustn't let their personal feelings get in the way. Jennifer is nothing more than another research subject. Oh, that's so rude. Uh, yes. Yes, you're right. Wow. Alright, so he's an ass. Have I looked at that computer? I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, okay, I did. about the clock tower murders, isn't it? I guess they want to sensationalize this scissor man who really <laughs> doesn't even exist. Scissor man. It'd be cool if you were real. Huh? Or, um, just a joke. Oh, okay, so I have to keep talking to them. Uh, face you got there, Barton? Oh, okay, he can run too. Oh, Professor. A newspaper reporter was looking for you on the first floor. Oh, thank you. First floor. What were you up to, Harris? Why do I hear tweeting birds inside a building? Tweet, tweet, motherfucker. To the first floor, please with your big, blocky pizza hands. Yeah. 
ding ding, motherfucker. Oh, Professor. I'm the one who called you from the Oslo Weekly News. My name is Nolan Campbell. And this is Tim, my cameraman. It's a pleasure. I am a bit busy, please keep it brief. Oh, oh, okay, so I actually have to, okay. Then I'll get right to the point. Have you been able to figure out who the murderer is? I can't say anything for sure yet, because the victim's testimony lacks credibility. Oh, do you mean the victim that's testifying? That'd be Jennifer Simpson, wouldn't it? Yes, but what about her? Oh, uh, nothing, really. It's just that we saw her leaving a few minutes ago. And since we'd run into her, we asked her for an interview, but she refused. That's probably... You just said her testimony lacked credibility. I know what you're going to say. That monster she was talking about, the Scissor Man. And whether he really exists. Or not. That's it, that's right. That's what our readers want to know. Because the existence of this Scissor Man has become a symbol of terror among youngsters. Oh, go fucking figure. Yes, and that's because trashy gossip magazines like yourself have sensationalized the whole thing. Ouch, that hurts. Not much I can say to that, is there? Well, let's start from the conclusion. It's a fact that there was a murderer who used a giant pair of scissors as his murder weapon. But that doesn't make him into an immortal monster. We're just dealing with some odd screwball. But what about what she said? She was scared. She thought she saw something. Oh, I see, but... Okay, that's it. Interview's over. There's something I must be attending to. Ah, well, okay, I understand. Thank you very much. Sorry I couldn't be as much help as you'd hoped. I have to get back to the lab. I'm expecting another survivor of the clock tower murders. Another survivor? He is supposed to be a young boy. About ten years old. Oh, shit. I don't think you want that kid in your lab. There's no reason to go to the third floor. I hate to waste time. Well, excuse me, pizza hand. Yeah, there wasn't a boy in the mansion with us. Oh, we can't go any further? Okay. So I have a feeling that ten-year-old boy is Scissor Man. Professor, the boy that survived the clock tower murders is here. Oh, has he arrived already? Yes, he's waiting in the therapy room. Well, 
Yes, thank you. Please run. There's just something you need to do in here. No, there isn't. Lies. If you're going to talk to somebody, finish it. Oh, that's right. I still need to get an expert observation on this. I'm just going to fill in the blanks. You probably ask Professor Sullivan, the head librarian at the municipal college? Oh, library. Yeah. Yes, but there was that old butler at the Barrows Mansion named Rick. I'll show it to him first to see if he knows anything. I'm pretty sure he lives in the suburbs. I could ask Harris to show it to him. Ask Harris? Yes. Let's send him off to do it. All right, I'll ask Harris to show it, Harris to, show it to Rick. You go do stuff. Harris, would you take this statue and show it to a man named Rick? Is that the statue that was at the scene of the murders? 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 Yes, it is. Would you ask him if he knows anything about it? Yes. I'll go and ask him on my way home this evening. Very good. Thank you. Okay, that's that. Should probably go to the therapy room. So I imagine this is also going to have a uh, effect on the story later, because I think the characters that we're meeting now actually... Who are you? Thank you very much for coming. How do you do? I am an instructor at the Granite Orphanage. I'm Edward's guardian. Edward? I thought he completely lost all his memory from the, from the shock. Does he remember his name? No, I call him Edward because not having a name to call him by or go by makes things very difficult. Difficult? Difficult, yep. Yeah. Eh. <laughs> now, since this is our first day, will you answer some simple questions for me? Okay, Edward? Now, I want you to honestly tell me everything you remember about what you saw, or what happened. Er, yes. Well then, let's get started. Now loading. Yes. Oh, we're playing... Oh. You said your hard drive crashed? That's too bad. Yes, I lost all this morning's data. I hope I can get it fixed sometime today. Otherwise... I won't get my dis dissertation done on time. Don't worry, when Danny gets back, I'm sure he'll be ha able to help you. You're probably right. In the meantime, I'm going to step out for a bit. Would you ask Danny for me, please? Sure, see you later. Where should I go? Uh, University Research Building, Staff Housing, Oslo Weekly Newspaper, Police Station, Norway Hotel. Let's go to the library. Municipal Library. Many university personnel use it. Hello, Helen. Mr. Sullivan. What are you doing here today? Oh, nothing really. Just thought I'd drop by. Oh, I see. I wanted to show you my collection. 
I've just added a new piece. Ah, yes, well, maybe next time. Okay, so I guess nothing there. What about the research? Uh, just another breath or two of fresh air. Mm. Staff housing, the campus house where I live. Jennifer should probably be getting home soon. Well, then we should check up on her. Hmm. Jennifer's gone somewhere. I wonder if she's found a boyfriend. Uh, this is probably just like... Get familiar with everything. Norway International Hotel. Edward and his guardian are staying here. They're here. Oh, Helen. How is it going? Any results from Professor Barton's therapy? No, but we can't give up hope. Sometimes, something will jog one's memory. Yes. Will you be staying here long? Mr. Barton also thought it a good idea. We plan to stay here for a while. Oh, really? Well, hang in there, Edward. <laughs> yes, Ms. Maxwell. It's an interesting thing to say to a kid, I guess. I don't know. That seems odd. The police station. Assistant Inspector Gotts. The person in charge of the clock tower case is here. Well, hey, Teach, got some new info? No. Have you got any leads? Nope, nothing. That old geezer of yours, he ain't coming clean. Do you mean Professor Barton? Yeah, that's him. He said there ain't nothing straight about the case. Yes, that sounds like Professor Barton. What about that little cutie? Ugh. Jennifer? She's still having nightmares. Occasionally. I ain't surprised. She was almost slashed up too, wasn't she? Well, let me know if you learn something. Okay, bye. There's a lot more talking in this game. Gotta get back to the university. Which is fine, because it helps fill in all the uh, blanks, spaces. And I should get home and work on my dissertation. Yay! Oh, Ms. Maxwell. I replaced your hard drive. Thanks, that's a big help. I'm going down to the lo lounge for a short nap. What are you going to do? We will all be going home soon. Oh, okay, well, no need to lock up. Okay. Scenario 1, Helen Maxwell. Alright, looks like we're going to be running for our lives. There are some cosmetics on the shelf brought in by the staff. I don't know which is whose. Who are you? Is that you, Baker? 
Oh, it's you, Helen. Baker's still in the lab. Bunk beds for napping. No one's using them now, but when, a when academic society meetings are near, it's quite a scramble to find an empty bed. Comic book brought in by one of the staff. An old air conditioner that doesn't work very well. The surrounding campus is lit up by the streetlights. It's pitch black outside. Huh. Bunk bids for napping. Well, I thought you were coming down here to take a nap, Helen. The women's lounge can be locked from the inside. That's good to know. We're probably going to need to know it. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, we know. Yeah, no one just is. Rose, are you seeing Baker again here? Yes, sort of. Well, no matter how late it is, remember, don't use the university as a motel. Let me sleep a little longer until Baker comes. Alright, well... I think it's about time for a nap. Would you turn off the light, please? I can't sleep with it on. Of course. Probably gonna turn off the light, gonna go to bed, gonna wake up, and she's dead. I'll take a quick cat nap, then work on my report. Is it? Zzz, does not sound good. Oh. Oh, what? Run, Helen! Oh shit, it's locked.
We're on the third floor? Great. Well, that didn't help. Ah! Oh. Oh. oh! Shit. Right. It said that the door can be locked from the other side. Alright, we gotta get back to that, that room, we can lock it. Emergency exit. That's odd, it doesn't even budge. Yeah, good thing I didn't try that first. Wait, where's that? Where is that lump that was on the bed? Uncomfortable bunk beds, famous for being squeaky. It's annoying that I don't just lock the door. The men's lounge. So the lump on the bed and the body are gone. Professor Fierro's lab. No way to get in. Somehow, her hands are covered with blood. Huh? Everything seems normal. Something told me Scissorman was in there.
are we... we? We can't be safe. I don't think we're safe yet. A cheap desk. No shit. They've got budget problems here, too. Wonder if there's something here that might be useful. Well, if there is, that'd be really nice. There are some tools here. I wonder if it's being repaired. This might be useful. You now have pliers. Yeah, pliers for what? Personal computer is on the table. Should have access to the internet. Then use it. Like, help. Okay, I've got pliers, but what good do they do me? Can't go upstairs because that's locked. Um, what's in the female washroom? Gotta be something. face is caught in the mirror. It is pale and drawn, a face she has never seen before. <laughs> Rose is covered in blood. Oh my god! Guess we found what happened to Rose. Shit. The mask is still here. Oh shit, shit. Yeah. 
Get under the desk, girl. Inside, there are some dress shirts, neckties, and umbrellas. The owner is well prepared. It's locked. Locked. Several stuffed animals inside. I wonder why these are here at a university. Flashlight. This might be useful. You now have the flashlight. A copier with a built in fax machine. The power's out here, too. The building is completely cut off from the outside. Of course. And the phone's going to be dead, too, most likely. Department. There's been a murder. Come quickly, please. Please relax, ma'am. Did you see the murderer? He's the one with the giant scissors. Scissor man. You've heard of him, haven't you? If this is a prank phone call. Wait! Aside from the fact that, you know, you could lose your job for that. Fax machine rings. And what did it print? Get ready, I'm coming to get ya. Holy shit. Magazine rack. Sofa. There are small shoe prints on it. They look like they were made by a child. There's something written on the table. You discovered hint number five. Well, okay, that's great and all that, but how do I look at the hints? No need to sit down now. <gasps> now 
now security will surely come. If I can somehow stay alive until then. There's a key laying on the table. What's this? Now have storage key. Stuff on the security guards often used for naps. Chair has been knocked over. I wonder what happened. Okay, well, where's the storage? Is it upstairs at the top? I think it is. gonna have to go upstairs to the top floor. Hopefully that provides us some safe places to hide. Maybe get in there, open it, and lock it from the other side. door to the rooftop. It's locked and can't be opened. Oh, that's right. This door is kept locked ever since someone committed suicide by jumping off the roof. Okay, well... Maybe storage is at the bottom floor. This is the bottom floor. Men's room. Research lab currently not being used. The door is locked and won't open. There's no way to open this door. What about this one? Oh, this is the storage room. Seems empty. find something to use as a weapon. There's nothing inside except a scrap of paper. This door should lead to the parking lot outside. It's wired shut. This door isn't supposed to be used. I don't fucking care. Yeah, we're cutting it. It worked. Good, now get the hell out, bitch. It's locked too? Oh my god. Use the key. Then open it!
Well, we managed to get out of that scenario. What in the f is going on? We haven't solved the last case yet, and now another murder. And you're saying the murderer is Scissorman? But it's true, I saw him clearly. Oh boy, oh boy. I sure hope you weren't daydreaming with Jennifer. Well, we're done questioning you for now. You can go home. Hmm. Oh, but don't go anywhere too far for a while. Because I'll probably have to call you in again. Soon. I know, gods. Helen. It's alright, Jennifer. Let's keep looking for more clues about Scissorman. If we don't do something ourselves, he'll probably kill us. No need for sarcasm, Teach. I really do want to believe your story, you know. Was it the real Scissor Man? Yes, but I don't know if it was the same one who attacked you before. But he sure didn't look human to me. Well. Shall we go? Okay. Somehow I must find a clue about Scissor Man. The house is surrounded by reporters. I shouldn't go anywhere near there now. The investigation of the scene seems to be over. Helen, are you all right? Yes, but more importantly, can we use the room now? Yes, but we couldn't get in all morning because of the investigation. By the way, Beth, I'd like to take a look at the statue. You mean the one they found at the scene of the murders? Right. I think Professor Barton had it. Well, he did, but I think he asked someone to take a look at it. It's not here? No, and Professor Barton isn't either. He's away on some police business. Darn, I wanted to look at the statue, because I was hoping it would give me a clue about Scissorman. Did he tell you where he was taking it? I think he said he would either take it to the library or to a man named Rick. If he took it to the library, that would be Mr. Sullivan. But who's Rick? I don't know. All right, I'll go over to the library. I'll call Mr. Sullivan. Thanks. Where's the library? There it is. The municipal library. I wonder if Professor Sullivan's there. Excuse me, is Mr. Sullivan here? No, he hasn't come back yet. Oh, I see. Well, <laughs> that was fast. Okay. Uh, well, where did he go? Where did he go? Oh, yes, I'll ask Gots about Rick.
That's good, because that's where we sent the statue. Got any new info, Teach? Do you know a man named Rick? Rick? That sounds familiar. Oh, yeah, he's the old geezer that used to be the butler. For the Barrows family. The Barrows family of the Clock Tower case? That would mean he... Well, he quit ten years before it all happened. I went to see him once, but he didn't know anything... ...about the case. But anyway, what about him? Well, Professor Barton might have given the statue to him. The statue? What, what for? That statue just might be the key to the secret of Scissorman. I think Professor Barton wanted him to look at it. I see. And since you believe in Scissor Man, you want to get your hands on it too? Well, if you want to put it that way. Well, we ain't got any other leads, do we? I can go and get it. You will? All I have to do is talk to Rick and get the statue. Right? Nothing to it. Yes, but... No. Thank you for offering, but Mr. Sullivan at the library may have it. If he doesn't, I'll give you a call. Okay, no problem. Just let me know as soon as you need me. Shoot. Okay, so that's not what it was. I was hoping that it was going to be... Ah, shit. Should have gotten him to do it. Oh, well. Nothing I can do. Excuse me, is Mr. Sullivan in? Mr. Sullivan? He's in... He's now in the head librarian's office. I see. Thank you. Oh, what's Edward doing here? Well, if it isn't Edward, what are you doing here? It's boring at the hotel. Hmm. Is Kay with you? No, she isn't. Oh. Okay. Interesting. I don't know why you would let him wander around by himself. The reading room can't be entered without a key. I am sure this is Mr. Sullivan's office. Okay. Yay. So then, enter it. Hello, Helen. It has been a long time, hasn't it, Mr. Sullivan? Yeah, it's been like 12 hours. I've heard about what happened to you. How terrible. Y yes. 
by the way, Mr. Sullivan. Yes, I have heard. There is something you would like to research. I'll give you a key to the reading room so you can use the reference map and materials as you please. The reading room is right next door. Oh, and the statue. Oh yes, that's it. However, I do not recall Professor Barton leaving it with me. But I will look into it, so you might stop by on your way out. Thank you very much, Mr. Sullivan. Okay, nothing else to look at. To the reading room we go. Now I can enter the reading room. Reading room. There are many valuable works here, only available to university personnel. I just hope there's something here that will explain the scissor man. doesn't seem to be in this area. Step ladder. Books relating to England are up there. This is a book I've been wanting to read for a long time, but this is hardly a time, a good time. This is it. Excuse me, but the library will be closing soon. Oh, I see. This gives me a clue about Scissor Man. I should leave soon. cut off his head.
so dead. I am so sorry. Let's end it there today. Thanks for watching, everybody. This has been our starting playthrough for Clock Tower 2. Uh, if you liked what you saw, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below letting me know what you liked, as well as any suggestions for future playthroughs, because as I've said before, we're doing a PlayStation 1 uh, library playthrough. And if you like the videos on my channel go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button it helps me out a lot and it helps you guys stay up to date with all the videos that i'll be posting thanks again for watching bye see how this goes that's that is a key I know it won't go for me.